Hello, everyone. I'm Lana Zak. We are following breaking news. The IDF says Iran has launched drones towards Israel. This is not unexpected. It's in retaliation for a strike in Syria this month that killed seven Iranian military officers at the consulate there. Iran blames Israel for that strike. Israel has not taken responsibility for it. I also want to let you know that we are hearing from the Israeli military. They say that these drones will take several hours before they are actually there in Israeli airspace. We have also a statement from the IDF. They said a short while ago, Iran launched UAVs from within its territory toward Israel. The IDF is on high alert and is constantly monitoring the operational situation. The IDF aerial defense array is on high alert, along with IAF fighter jets and Israeli Navy vessels that are on a defense mission in Israeli airspace. The IDF is monitoring all targets. Additionally, we heard from the Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, who said our defense systems are deployed. We are prepared for any scenario, both in defense and attack. We will protect ourselves from any threat, and we will do so with coolness and determination. I want to bring in now CBS News' Natalie Brand. She is at the White House. Natalie, we've been monitoring this since we first learned that Iran had pledged that they were going to uh, have retribution for those those officers that were killed uh, in what they believed to be uh, Iranian uh, sovereign territory in Syria because it was in that consulate there. President Biden has said many times that America is devoted is devoted to defending Israel. Talk to us about what support from the U.S. looks like. Yeah, well, Lana, just to bring you up to the latest here at the White House, President Biden is now on his way back to meet with the National Security Council, the lead principals on uh, his national security team in the Situation Room to monitor the latest developments. We don't have anything further uh, about what we know about this attack, but we do know that ahead of it, President Biden once again reiterated that the United States uh, stands firmly in support of Israel, devoted to Israel's self-defense, and warned that Iran will not succeed. Uh, we also know that the Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin and National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan uh, spoke to their Israeli counterparts today and reiterated that message. Uh, from our defense team, we've We've learned that the U.S. has been uh, moving additional assets mm -hmm. to the region uh, to really bolster the protection of U.S. forces in the region uh, and try to bolster deterrence. We're also hearing from our Margaret Brennan and Pentagon uh, producer Ellie Watson that the U.S. Uh, has fighter jets on standby. Uh, Israel, as we know, says that it's been preparing for, for this attack for the worst case scenario of what uh, sources told CBS News uh, could be more than 100 drones and uh, ballistic missiles. But at the same time, experts on the region have said that while they believe Iran seeks retaliation, they also believe that Iran does not seek conflict uh, or a situation that would draw in the United States, Lana. Yes, and I just want to be clear for our viewers that those were some of the assets that Iran has. It, uh, but we do not know that all of that has, in fact, been deployed. In fact, right. the latest that we've been seeing are uh, that, that the number of drones are in the tens rather than the hundreds. Um, and we also know, as you said, Natalie, that this is a tricky time, and U.S. officials and Iranian officials have been trying to avoid war both. And we also know, additionally, uh, that Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin spoke with his counterpart in Israel, reiterating U.S.'s unwavering support for Israel. As you mentioned, Margaret Brennan said that there are several U.S. assets in the area, including the Navy destroyer USS Kearney, that's positioned in the central Mediterranean, and USS Arleigh Burke, which remains in the eastern Mediterranean. And Margaret also reports that the U.S. is positioned to shoot down those drones as they are making their way now to Israel. So just to be clear for our viewers, those drones have been launched. We are not sure exactly how many there are, but that both Israel and the United States are prepared for those incoming drones and intend to shoot them down 
over the course of the next few hours. So given, Natalie, that, that the hope is that further escalation can be avoided, how is the United States planning to engage in this conflict uh, as we are seeing these drones making their way over to Israel, a major U.S. ally? And that remains to be seen because, as you've been mentioning, there's so much that we just don't know right now. Um, Margaret Brennan, from her reporting, we know that the U.S. preference here is that the Israeli government wait and assess the impact uh, of what's to come of an attack uh, and then calibrates its response uh, depending on the outcome here. Again, experts I've been talking to on the region, one Iran Iranian expert um, from the Middle uh, East Institute says that uh, really what remains to be seen is how Israel will respond to an attack by Iran. And he also noted that the Iranian regime just doesn't know whether the Biden administration has the political influence over Prime Minister Netanyahu uh, to, to uh, determine what his response will be and really uh, prevent further escalation here. There's just so many unknowns at this hour. Yes, and there's a lot of diplomacy that is also happening in addition to this. Uh, Natalie, have we heard anything from the president? Uh, when Can you tell us more about the decision that he made to cut his trip to Delaware short, to make it back to the White House there to meet with his national security teams? Well, we know that this is obviously a situation they've been taking extremely seriously. They've been monitoring uh, things changing hour by hour here. So uh, we received word this afternoon that he would, in fact, be cutting short his, his weekend trip to Delaware to return uh, and, and be here in person to consult with his national security team, the defense secretary, national security advisor, Jake Sullivan, uh, and monitor this as it unfolds. Because, again, what's really key here uh, is how Israel potentially uh, responds and how this could uh, potentially involve the United States. Again, we don't have a new statement from the White House or President Biden as of yet. Uh, but Friday, he, he made clear uh, that the U.S. is committed to, to Israel's uh, self-defense and that it is devoted to that. He was warning Iran uh, don't move forward with an attack. But here we are uh, today, uh, around 24 hours later, and we're just going to have to see uh, what unfolds. Yeah. The latest that we heard from the White House is that the president has been briefed on the events and is making his way over to the Situation Room, where he's going to be meeting with, among others, uh, Secretary Antony Blinken, Secretary Lloyd Austin, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and, uh, and others as well. All right, Natalie, stay with us. Appreciate you joining us as we're continuing to monitor this situation from all different angles.